My name is Leia Feely, and this is a recording of the information that I have written in terms of neuroscience and education. Based on recent studies, educators want to be more informed about the brain. A study of educators from the UK and the Netherlands, as well as a collection of neuroscience education conference attendees, shows that teachers want to be able to learn about the brain and neuroscience and their possible applications to education. Teachers feel the information is important to their professional development. The problem is that there is a distinct lack of research that can connect neuroscience and make applications to education. So teachers end up turning to what has begun to fill the void and those are what we call pseudoscience and neuromyths. Uh, because teachers are looking for better teaching methods and more credibility, these accessible programs like the Brain Gym or the Learning Styles Theory gives them ideas and tools that seemed based in logical common knowledge but actually have very little relevance to brain research or even learning research. Neuromyths like the brain gym and learning styles theories are based on accurate information but have been but have distorted or misquoted research. These programs claim a connection between brain research and education but they're actually just sort of distorting cognitive psychology and learning research. The information used in these very well marketed programs contain advice and information that sounds useful or even appropriate because they're based in theories we already have and use about learning. The problem is that just because these theories feel right or are comfortable or in line with our experiences does not make those theories accurate representations of best practices. The Brain Gym program, for example, claims to improve brain function through a series of exercises. This is a distortion of research that shows exercise or taking breaks from learning can improve memory. Brain Gym does include valid information gleaned from research like works by Yost or Barik or Wozniak regarding the use of interval learning or spacing effects and research by Zagarnik with his self-interruption tactics. These tools allow the students to step away from their studies, do other things like exercise, um, and has been, which has been shown to improve memory. Well-timed interruptions or time off from studying or working on a project do have positive effects on memory and learning, but there's no evidence that a specific set of exercise or type of interruption is better or worse than others. That is the misconception of a program like Brain Gym. The theory that different students have different optimum learning styles, such as kinesthetic or aural, is one to which many people can relate. Many people have preferences for how they learn. Some prefer to read the information, others to hear it, and others prefer to write it. Unfortunately, research does not support the idea that following these preferences can lead to better learning. Cornell and Bjork did a study in which they tested participants' abilities to improve in different skills by having them practice either in blocks, where they would practice each skill over and over before moving on to the next one, or in a few different types of mixed or interleaving schedules where the participants practice skills in a random or more mixed set. The research ended up showing that people performed best when they interleave or mix skills in that mixed set as opposed to a blocked set. They 
they followed up the research by asking their participants how they felt about the different ways to practice. And the participants preferred the blocked practice over the mixed studying, despite knowing that they had improved more using the mixed study, mixed practice set. This kind of preference probably comes from what we're used to. That's how we've always studied or how we've always practiced. Um, in order to take, to fully take advantage of that kind of research, we're going to have to make big changes in how we teach the next generation study skills. Our preferences are not necessarily the answer for achieving our best. Because neuroscience does not yet provide the information teachers are looking for for better teaching methodologies, I think it would be best to stick with the research we have from cognitive psychology and learning research and stop looking for educational improvement, improvement methods in brain research. Um, it is important for teachers to have access to information to improve professionally and to improve in the classroom, but it should be peer-reviewed, evidence-based research. The resources in the Carey book that we use in this course, research from the Bjorks, from Wozniak, and the Barrick family, demonstrate tools and techniques that have been studied scientifically and offer teachers ways to make positive changes in their classrooms. Until neuroscientists can translate their brain research into information that's meaningful for educators, there should be a scientific outlet for advice and information. Research into the mind as opposed to the brain might be the better option for now. Thank you.